British police have arrested the founder of the WikiLeaks website, Julian Assange, and removed him from the Ecuadorian embassy in London. The Metropolitan Police say they were invited into the embassy after its government withdrew his asylum status. He's now thought to be en route to a central London police station. He's lived at the embassy since 2012. Well, with me now is our diplomatic correspondent, James Landale. James, welcome to you. You broke this news. What do we know? Well, what we know is that this is the product of a long negotiation between the British government and the Ecuadorian authorities. They have, uh, under the current uh, political leadership uh, in Ecuador, they have become increasingly frustrated by the situation, Mr Assange being kept uh, in their embassy in London uh, for so long. Uh, they've been looking for a way of resolving the solution, uh, resolving the situation. So what happened is that the, the Ecuadorians agreed that they felt that Mr. Assange had breached his asylum conditions. There are lots, of, if you claim asylum, there are lots of rules what you can and cannot do. You cannot, for example, engage in political activity and things like that. So they were formally withdrew his asylum. That, uh, and they, then they invited the British police onto Ecuadorian soil, namely their embassy, which allowed the British police to arrest Mr. Assange for breaching bail, this, uh, the, officially known as failing to surrender to the court. This dates back to the original uh, allegations when there were extradition hearings. The United States wanted Mr. Assange extradited to the United States where he could um, face questioning for the, 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 the release of all that information through what we now call WikiLeaks. Um, obviously, by going into entering the Ecuadorian embassy, he breached those bail conditions. So what's going to happen now is um, he's being taken to a central London police station uh, and the police say that he will be presented before Westminster Magistrates Court as soon as is possible. Reminders of the background to this, because initially Julian Assange wanted, it was Sweden that wanted to question him on yes. sexual assault allegations. Yes, there, were, there was, as well as the, uh, the Americans saying that we want to talk to Mr Assange about the WikiLeaks revelations, the Swedish authorities also wanted to talk to him about allegations uh, that were sexual, about sexual offences that were allegedly made in Sweden. Um, and uh, now those, those charges have now um, lapsed. They have actually, but they can be, re, you know, restarted if the Swedish authorities wish to do that. But at the moment, they are not extant. So what charges is he likely to face in a British court? Because we had a statement from the Home Secretary saying he's now in police custody and rightly facing justice in the UK. Yes, th those are for bail, breaching bail right. conditions. So it's, it's the, the charges that he'll face in the UK are for breaching bail. His concern was that he did not want to be extradited to the United States, as you yeah. mentioned. Could that now happen? It's possible. It depends entirely what the Americans... Uh, say and do. It depends, first of all, what happens through the British judicial process. Um, and then once that has happened, then it, the question remains, you know, what, what action do the Americans want to take? Do they want to push ahead with extradition um, or not? So that's the first question we need to ask them. And were there any, was there any response yet from Julian Assange's lawyers? Not as, not, 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 not as yet. OK, James, we'll let you go, but I know that you'll obviously be back with us as soon as there are more developments. Thank you. Well, as we were hearing, Mr Assange took refuge in the embassy seven years ago to avoid extradition to Sweden over a sexual assault case that has since been dropped. Our correspondent Caroline Hawley looks back on how the case progressed. This report does contain some flash photography. Julian Assange shot to fame with a massive spill of American state secrets. But it was then his personal life that put him at the centre of an international drama that's run for years. This shocking footage first brought WikiLeaks to international attention. That's a weapon. Come on, fire! It shows the killing of a group of Iraqis, including two journalists, by a helicopter gunship. A flood of secret documents on the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan followed, and then classified diplomatic cables. This is, um, to his admirers, he became a champion of free speech and transparency. In the US, he was, is, seen as a threat to national security. In 2010, Julian Assange found himself in a prison van and then in court after Sweden issued an arrest warrant, hoping to question him over allegations made by two Swedish women of sexual assault. Allegations he denies. Soon, to his supporters' delight, he was out on bail. Well, it's great to smell fresh air of London again. Under his bail conditions, he lived in this manor house in Norfolk, owned by a friend. He took his appeal against extradition to Sweden to the highest court in the land. But eventually, in 2012, he lost. His appeal against extradition is accordingly dismissed. 
the Embassy of Ecuador in London became his new home. He'd walked through its doors in June 2012 and asked for political asylum. It was granted. For the UK government, Mr Assange was a fugitive from justice. It spent millions policing the embassy before the round-the-clock guard was lifted. There were public addresses by Julian Assange from the embassy balcony. Can you hear me? This was 2017, on the day the Swedish investigation against him was dropped because prosecutors couldn't pursue the case in his absence. Today is an important victory. But Julian Assange stayed on inside the embassy, fearing that if he was arrested for skipping bail in the UK, he could be extradited to the US. Pamela Anderson was among those who used to go and see him, but last year his visits were strictly curtailed. Relations between Mr Assange and his hosts have badly soured. While he was inside, Ecuador had a change of government and the now president described him as a stone in the shoe. He had new conditions imposed on his stay, including that he avoid online political activity and that he properly looked after his cat. Julian Assange went as far as taking the Ecuadorian government to court over the new rules and lost. He still has some fervent support, but the patience of his hosts has come to an end, and with it, his long, long stay in Knightsbridge. Caroline Hawley, BBC News. Well, we've just had a statement in from Sir Alan Duncan, who is the Minister of State for Europe and the Americas, who said it's absolutely right that Assange will face justice in the proper way in the UK. It is for the courts to decide what happens next. Well, let's go to Geoffrey Robertson QC, a member of Julian Assange's legal team. Thank you very much for being with us here on BBC World News. What was Mr Assange's reaction to his arrest? I don't know, because I'm not a member of his legal team, but I have appeared for him in the past and uh, given him advice from time to time and saw him as recently as a couple of weeks ago. I, I think first I can say that this is an utterly disgraceful and unprecedented act by Ecuador to give someone asylum for seven years and then to hand them over, because that is what appears to have happened. And uh, as a result, uh, it is a breach of international law, the international law of asylum will go down uh, in asylum history as uh, an outrage. So that, I think, is the first point to make. Ecuador has changed president. It now has an utterly pro-American president, and it's been granted by Mike Pence, who visited Ecuador recently, a very large loan. And no doubt that is the, so to speak, blood money that has uh, inspired... Well just to pick you up on that, our correspondent was suggesting that actually Mr Assange breached his asylum okay. conditions. That was last year. That was early last year. He tweeted some support for the Catalonian separatists in Barcelona and his internet access was restricted uh, and he was only allowed to see lawyers. But uh, since then, He's obeyed those restrictions. Uh, I think the Ecuadorian government has tried to make life very uncomfortable for him in the embassy, but he hasn't left of his own accord. Uh, he's been forcibly handed over. And so that's the, the first point. Uh, what will happen now is that he will uh, be uh, held for, and, and it will be open for him to apply for bail, he will be held on a charge of breach of bail, uh, because he did, in breach of his bail conditions, go into the Ecuadorian embassy seven years ago. Uh, that is usually dealt with by a fine or a short prison sentence, which will not uh, worry him in the least, I suspect, because he's in effect been uh, under imprisonment in the Ecuadorian embassy in, in the last year because of the restrictions. But what really worry will worry him and what worries all uh, who are concerned with freedom of speech, particularly in America, is that he will then be prosecuted on charges. Uh, well, there will be an application by America to extradite him 
on charges that will carry up to 45 years imprisonment uh, in an American supermax. And the argument will be that he's not entitled to First Amendment protection, which protects Americans, uh, because he's not American, he's an Australian. Uh, and he will be prosecuted on charges under the Espionage Act in Ameri of, of America, uh, even though he didn't publish uh, anything in America. It was published by The Guardian and The New York Times, which will not be prosecuted. But he, the desire is to make him an example, as, as Chelsea Manning, his source, was made an example of uh, by being sent to prison for 35 years. President Obama uh, pardoned him, but I don't see President Trump pardoning Julian Assange. So uh, it will be, uh, firstly, an extradition battle in the British courts to see whether uh, the British courts take uh, the same view as I do of uh, the American exorbitant demand. Mm. I, I just want to bring this to you because we just heard this confirmation well, it's via the Reuters news agency, at least. They've reported that Britain has guaranteed to Ecuador that Julian Assange will not be extradited to a country that has the death penalty. And they quote the uh, Ecuadorian no president. About, no, that's a joke. Uh, no one is talking about the death penalty. No, America. but they won't be extradited to a country that has the death penalty, which obviously includes the United States. Oh, no. For this, I think you'll find, and it's important to clarify this, that he will not be extradited. We have a rule that no one is extradited to America unless it's plain that they will not face the death penalty. And no one is suggesting that Mr. Assange and the grand jury uh, that's sitting at the moment uh, in Virginia, that the Mr. Assange will be uh, subject to a charge which carries the death penalty. I just want so, to bring our viewers pictures of Mr. Assange being arrested outside the Ecuadorian assembly in, uh, embassy rather, in London um, a short time ago. Um, we can see him there. I'm not sure. I think he's in a chair, possibly, uh, possibly a wheelchair there. He looked quite frail. Um, just a brief shot there. We'll replay it again. How did he seem to you when you saw him a few well, weeks it, ago? He's changed a lot. He's certainly been in need of medical uh, treatment. He's not been allowed. The British government have rather cruelly refused to allow him to go to hospital for what his specialists have insisted. Uh, he needs x-rays. He needs uh, scans. Uh, he does have a chest condition that requires treatment. So at least perhaps one bright side of for him of this development is that he might be less cruelly treated and be able to be uh, inspected and to have his health examined. But the important thing is to examine what the British government is saying. And I think you'll find that it is simply uh, saying that it won't extradite him on charges that carry the death penalty. These charges carry up to 45 years imprisonment in an American supermax, and that uh, is perhaps uh, the equivalent of the death penalty for a man in his 40s uh, in the poor health that Mr. Assange is in at the moment. Is he likely to face those charges again in Sweden? Our correspondent was suggesting that even though they dropped those charges, they could resurface. I think for all practical purposes, they are dead. So there's no, and never has been on his part, any fear of those charges. But uh, what he fears is what now may happen, namely extradition to America to face many, many years uh, in a supermax prison. So that is really the issue now is freedom of speech. It comes, uh, the, the great lawyer, Jim Goodale, for the New York Times, came out of retirement recently to say, whether or not you like or dislike Julian Assange is not to the point. This is vital to freedom of speech in America, that he should be uh, free and not be prosecuted for making 
information available of public interest that has added to our knowledge of history. Obviously, there are many who believe he shouldn't face a trial, including himself and yourself. Um, but there is nevertheless a legal process in America, one that the vast majority of people consider to be free and fair and unpolluted by politics. Why shouldn't he go to America and face the judicial process? Why shouldn't the editor of The Guardian, of the, all the newspapers who published his stories, be hauled off to America to be jailed for exercising a right of freedom of speech? This man has been and is a publisher of information which is in the public interest. It relates to, uh, to, to manslaughter, at least, by American forces. It relates to death squads. It relates to taxation, chicanery, and so forth. And this is information of public interest. He hasn't stolen it. He hasn't held anyone up or hurt anyone to obtain it. It's been fed to him as a publisher. So if freedom of speech okay. means anything, freedom of information, it means he shouldn't be hauled off and jailed for the rest of his life. Jeffrey Robertson, QC, we must leave it there. Thank you very much. A former member of Julian Assange's legal team who saw Mr. Assange just a couple of weeks ago. Well, the police have said that he was taken into custody at a central London police station where he will remain before being presented before Westminster Magistrates Court as soon as possible. The Metropolitan Police Service was invited into the embassy by the ambassador following the Ecuadorian government's withdrawal of asylum. These pictures we brought you a few moments ago do show the moment that Julian Assange was removed from the embassy. It looks like he's being carried, um, obviously resisting arrest there, some would suggest, from those pictures, being put in that police van. And as we know, now on his way, or certainly no doubt probably in a police station now at the moment, uh, awaiting to find out what happens next. We'll bring you more on that arrest in a few moments' time. Just want to bring you...